we are discussing step 3 of the curation process finding appropriate learning resources using filters in the last session we discussed algorithmic filters in this session we will look at social filters let's look at our second case go online and find three good books on financial literacy which will be appropriate for beginners who are interested in learning about money so that they can manage money better when they start earning our learning objective is still a cognitive one learning a life skill namely financial literacy and our target audience is still students who could be high school level or undergraduates this time we will limit ourselves to using social and personal filters to curate relevant resources so that we understand these filters better what are social filters in his book wisdom of the crowds author james surowiecki tells this story in 1906 english polymath sir francis galton was at a country fair at the fair there was a competition people had to guess the weight of an ox that was on display around 800 people guessed some of them were ox breeders and could be considered experts but most of them were general onlookers and had so to say no insider information galton later calculated that the average of the group's guess was 1197 pounds and the actual weight of the ox was 1198 pounds a very accurate guess especially considering it was an average of 800 guesses by non experts the subtitle of surowiecki's book explains it all why the many are smarter than the few in certain situations groups of people can be smarter than the smartest person in the group take the case of the famous tv show who wants to be a millionaire one of the lifelines allowed to the participants is ask the audience and according to surowiecki 91% of the times the audience collectively arrives at the right answer you can also think of number of citations an academic article receives as a wisdom of the crowd filter because more citations usually prove to be a good indicator of quality and relevance in the process of curating appropriate learning resources wisdom of the crowd filter or relying on collective wisdom can be very useful let's go back to our mission to find three good books on financial literacy and see how we can use the wisdom of the crowd social filter we will use amazon since it is a very large online bookseller don't worry we don't want to buy a book we just want to see how social filters can be applied to curate good learning resources we are using amazon because many people use this website so there is a good chance it will provide reliable collective wisdom input since our objective is to find books on amazon we first select the books department we then type a generic query let's say financial literacy to see what books amazon comes up with we get these results note that amazon also provides algorithmic filters like new arrivals categories format author we again meet robert kiyosaki here price and other filters let's sort these results on average customer review to get books that on an average have got 4 stars and up let's select paperbacks because there are more options here than in hardcover or in the kindle edition let's sort these results again on average customer review
let's scan these results. This book title, Personal Finance for Dummies, has an average rating of 5 stars based on feedback from 25 customers. While this book titled Sheconomics has an average rating of 5 stars based on feedback from 15 customers. Let's click on the first book, Personal Finance for Dummies, to find more information. Amazon offers the Look Inside feature for many books. We can click this and take a peek inside the book so that we get a sense of what the book covers. Perusing through the content section gives a sense that this book may be useful in our context. So let's make a note of the author's name, Eric Tyson. We can scroll down or click the customer reviews tab to read the user reviews, selecting some who have given 5 on 5. and some who have given 1 on 5 rating. If the reviews reinforce that this may be a relevant resource, then we can go back to Google and search for the author, Eric Tyson. We get a link to his website. We can click this and scan through it. Or we can use the algorithmic filters we looked at in the last session and search to see if there are any videos from this author. We can use further filters like duration to find videos that may be relevant for our target audience. But let's go back to Amazon because we are interested in using wisdom of the crowd filter and not the algorithmic filters. We can check out people who bought this item also bought feature that Amazon provides. This book has got an average rating of little over 4 stars but from 134 users. Remember the last book we checked had got 5 stars but based on the average rating of 25 users. We can click and check this book, use the look inside feature, read the user comments and if we think it may be a useful resource, google the author or the title of the book and check if videos or content in other formats is available because our intention is to provide multiple learning paths to our learners. Another thing you can do on Amazon is to check for books or authors you know about. For example, we had found Robert Kiyosaki's video useful in the last session. So we can search Robert Kiyosaki on Amazon. Wisdom of the crowd filter helps us in two ways here. One, we can see the average customer ratings for his books and read the customer reviews for books that have got a high rating. Two, we can also check the customers who bought this item also bought collective wisdom filter that Amazon provides to get more suggestions. For example, in the context of our target learners, Robert Kiyosaki's book titled Rich Dad, Poor Dad for Teens listed here may be more relevant. So we click this. And you know the drill now. Check the user comments, Google the title of the book or the name of the author, check for videos and other resources. We are relying on the wisdom of the crowd to help us curate appropriate resources. If you are looking at books as learning resources, another great place to check out is the Talks at Google YouTube channel. Google invites authors, musicians, chefs, economists, leaders and others to speak about their work. You may find a comprehensive talk given by the author on the book you have found using the wisdom of the crowd filter. Either the talk itself may be useful for your audience or the talk may help you decide whether you want to buy the book. To check if a Google Talk is available on the book you are looking for, you can try a query like Google Talks followed by the name of the author. Unlike TED Talks, which are mostly of 18 minutes duration, Google Talks are usually an hour long and hence far more comprehensive. Another type of social filter is a bookmarking website. You may have used bookmarking feature on your browser where you bookmark sites that you find useful for future reference. Social bookmarking involves one user bookmarking a web resource. The resource could be a website or a video or an image or anything else on a public website. And then other people 
vote on the usefulness of that resource, which may be a vote up or a vote down. The end result is that on social bookmarking websites, when you search for content, you not only get useful links, you also get to see how many votes that link has got and so you rely on collective wisdom of many users. Social bookmarking is metadata, that is data about data, generated collaboratively. Popular social tagging websites are Reddit, Delicious and StumbleUpon. Let's use these to find books and other useful resources on financial literacy. I search for financial literacy on Reddit website and get these results. I can narrow down my search using these filters, financial planning, personal finance or financial fitness. The listed links have been tagged by users and not by an algorithmic engine and then the resources have been voted on by other users. This gives me a sense how useful a resource is based on the number of votes it has got. I can also narrow my search by changing the search phrase to something like books on financial literacy because that is what I am really looking for. You will notice that people are also asking for referral resources and some have got a response. Of course, you will have to vet these resources that have been suggested. Here are some of the results from Delicious website on the search query financial literacy. This link, the mint.org, could be something interesting since the description says fun financial literacy activities for kids, teens, parents. Although our objective right now is to look for books, as a curator, it pays to remain open to serendipity, being open to things you are not in quest of. Here are the results from StumbleUpon on the search query financial literacy. As information, StumbleUpon requires a registration, though it is free. Notice this link, Jay-Z and Warren Buffett team up to teach kids. I know this is a great resource on financial literacy for younger kids and you may recall I showed this website when I was sharing how I curate learning resources as a parent of an 11 year old. My point is that on the web you have to strike a balance between remaining focused on your search and being open to chance findings. Let's try one last social filter, Twitter. You may think that you are not interested in tweeting what you had for breakfast this morning, so why bother about Twitter? But with millions of tweets being posted every day, Twitter has become a great resource repository, well worth checking when you are curating. Here are some of the results for the search query financial literacy books on Twitter. There are many more results if I scroll down and I will again have to use skimming and scanning to find links that are useful in the current context. Twitter brings us to the third type of filter, personal filters. If you tweet and you have some followers on Twitter, then you can put out a query, something like, please suggest books on financial literacy for high school students and undergraduates. Or if you are on Facebook, you can ask friends in your network. Since these people know you, hopefully, what they will recommend may be very useful. There is another service called Quora, which is a great personal filter. It is a free service, but it requires registration and you also have to select 5 topics of your interest to get started. Once inside, you can either search Quora for referral links, as I have done here, but this amounts to using Quora as a social filter. However, on Quora, you can also post a query and another person, usually an enthusiast in the domain, will give you an answer. Since answers can be voted on, reputation of the person giving the answer is at stake and they will not give a frivolous answer. You can also follow a topic or follow people on Quora and become part of the conversation. I hope this gives you a good idea on how to use social and personal filters while curating. 
new services and tools keep coming up on the internet. So it makes sense to keep yourself up to date. Once you are thick in the game of curation, keeping yourself updated is not a problem because your radar is up and you do get to catch new trends and emerging tools. In summary, social filters are wisdom of the crowd filters where we rely on collaborative filtering and collective wisdom. In this session, we looked at how to use sites like Amazon that have a lot of users and allow ratings, rankings and reviews to find learning resources while curating. We also looked at social bookmarking sites like Reddit, Delicious and StumbleUpon. We also considered how to use Twitter as a searchable knowledge repository. Then we looked at personal filters, where we considered how to use Twitter and Facebook to ask for referral resources from your friends and your network. And finally, we looked at Quora, where you can ask a question to a community of enthusiasts and you will get a fellow human being giving you an answer. I hope these two sessions have given you a fair idea of how to use algorithmic, social and personal filters to curate learning resources.